Hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion table today. This is where creators of all kind connect to inspire, to share their ideas and stories, and hopefully that will transform the world through raw, unedited talk. And today I am here with Mr. Joshua Fleming. And he goes, hi, hi Josh. <laughs> hey, Josh. Hi, how are you doing? I am well. I, and I'm, I'm accustomed to calling him Joshua, so I might go back and forth with Josh and Joshua. <laughs> but um, let me tell the connecting point so we can go on with this here, Joshua. Now, if I'm not mistaken, our history goes back maybe, is it five, six years? How long has it been, Joshua? Oh. Uh uh, more, more so uh, since 2019, no, 2009. 2009, uh, oh my God. Yes, that's whenever I started uh, working with the Atlanta Public Schools, so. Yes, 2009, Joshua came in, um, actually, I knew you before you started working with me, didn't I? Did I uh, know yes. you before you, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, it was about three years uh, before we started uh, working, working together at the same school. Uh, so yeah. I started, uh, but I knew of you and knew of all of the great works uh, that you were doing uh, inside of the classroom, and not only that, but inside of the, well within the community as well. So well, I I remember meeting Joshua, and we, we were in the same school for a while, which was exciting. Um, we got to work, you know, closely together. Joshua is actually he's here for one thing, but he has many areas of creativity. Um, but Joshua is a musician. He's an educator, music educator <laughs> like myself. <laughs> um, he's a father, a husband, and he is someone we need to be talking to today about helping us save money. Now, the, the, this is what's so funny. I never saw Joshua as somebody who was going to be talking to me about saving money because most of the time, <laughs> Uh, most of the time, Joshua would be asking me, what are you doing in your classroom? What, how can you help me with mine? So now it's his turn to help me <laughs> be frugal <laughs> and help you all be frugal with your finances. Joshua, welcome to the Connected Point. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, can you tell the audience a little bit about <laughs> how you got started on this platform. Now, Joshua has a show, and I'm going to put it out there early because we got a lot to talk about. He has a show called Frugal Me. Now, Joshua, can you explain the term frugal? Because some of us might have uh, different definitions of being frugal. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, with the Just Frugal Me, and also I have uh, a show as well, Frugal Me Live, a lot of times when people think about being frugal, they think that they got a pinch a penny here, a pinch a penny here, and pretty much forsake their lifestyle. But being frugal is pretty much being resourceful with your money. It's being resourceful with the things that you do have in your possession. So a frugal person can go out and have a life. It's saying whenever, a lot of times when people think about being frugal, they're like, okay, that person just cheap. But whenever you're cheap, you're only cheating yourself. But whenever you're being frugal, you are devising a plan to follow that plan. If your plan, if your frugal plan is to go out and drive like a Tesla or a Lamborghini, that's your frugal plan because that's just saying that you're going to be resourceful. You're not going to just go out and spend everything that you have, but you're going to devise a plan and follow that plan. So uh, that's just all in a nutshell, the channel Just Frugal Me, what it's all about. It's just talking about just coming up with a plan and laying the groundwork uh, for that and breaking those generational curses. Yes. Uh, because one thing, Dr. Simmons, and I, I'm not going to go too long here, 
But one thing that I found, especially in the black and brown community, that speaking about our finances and saving money and how we're investing our money and building a better future for our children, it has become a taboo, taboo. subject. Mm -hmm. that it's like, don't mention that. And it's so crazy that we as a family will mention other people's dirt, what they're going through, their sins and what, but when it comes to our money, that's like a hush uh -huh, uh -huh. That's a hush hush subject. It's like, okay, we had to talk about Uncle Roy, but let's not talk about our money. So it's just one of those um, channels that it's okay to devise a plan with your finances. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I'm sitting here now thinking about how I grew up. And we grew up, um, we didn't want for much. However, mm -hmm. Our parents, they were working. We, we, you know, we saw them working. My grandparents, I saw them working. But no one really ever sat me down and said, this is how you're going to do this. This regarding finances. Absolutely. You know, um, balancing checkbooks, um, investing in stocks and, you know, those type of things. No one sat us down to discuss this and i've talked with many friends about it who are mm -hmm. you know my age and we're all saying the same thing it's not that they didn't want us to know they just didn't think about you know sharing financial information with the children and uh, and one thing too as a family that you can't really share what you have never been taught Right. And, um, and even inside of the school system, where I feel that the education system has failed many yes. people. Yes, Because they're teaching, they're teaching inside of the classrooms how to become a follower, and not a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, teaching you how to work for somebody else mm -hmm. versus starting your own business. Yes. And, and coming up with those creative ideas. And that's one thing I love what you're doing here with the connecting point is that it takes a community in order to uh, bring forth change and to bring forth the light. But you know, like, like the word says that darkness can't drive out of darkness. Only right. light can do that. Only so light can do the, that. the beacon of light is that information because whenever you start sharing information, you can change generation, not just one. Uh, my favorite Chinese proverb, Dr. Simmons, it says, if you teach a man how to fish, no, if you give a man a fish, he will eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he will eat for a lifetime. And that's one thing too that we have to do with our finances is not only just say, okay, I got mine and I'm going to go off and just live my life. But how are you helping somebody else get over it? It's like the old Mahalia Jackson song that says, if I can help somebody, yeah. yeah, from doing my living shall not be in vain. So it's like whenever you're going back and educating people about things that matter. And a lot of things out there matter, but whenever you're talking about someone's livelihood, whenever you can go back and just share light and share some of the experiences with the, that person, hoping that they're not going to make the same mistakes. Right. That you're pretty much are creating now purpose. And it's, That's it's important. Absolutely. And it's just so important to know what your purpose is. Ooh. I know I'm a musician and I, and I love, even in the classroom, my number one thing I set out to do every day, even inside of the classroom, is to inspire. Because if you are not there to create change, it's like that you're only wasting time. But everything that you do should be able to build a greater and better future for someone else. Absolutely. So even with the finance, uh, financial part as well, just to inspire you how to save, how to invest, how to save money, the good things to do with money, the not so good things to do with money. So, yeah. You know, I, uh, when you just said uh, about the school systems have failed our children, um, and in a sense failed us, you know, because mm -hmm, they're absolutely. growing up to be adults, um, by teaching them, they just need to get a nine to five or whatever. That is one thing I um, focus on in my classroom. I, 
I tell my students, listen, what can you do to start your own business? How can you generate right out of plan? Show me what you want you're doing. And at the highlight of my school year this year, there was a student. I actually was not, I was on family medical leave at the time, and this student called me at 7.15 in the morning, mm. a fourth grade student. <laughs> and she was so excited. She said, Dr. Simmons, guess what? I said, what? She said, I'm starting my own business. Oh, wow. And I, I, I mean, I just felt overjoyed because I said, Absolutely. you know what? This child remembers that I told her, start something. You mm. can do something now. And so I said, you know what? You all are well on your way. But that is what we have to instill in our children and our community as a whole. It's okay to work. Yes, a, a nine to five could got to feed the family. Absolutely. But what is it that you are good at creating that can generate some funds in your household? And I've seen you, you've done it quite well, Joshua. You know, uh, <laughs> if people have been following me, they know that I have interviewed your girls, uh, Jess, Jessie and Izzy. Say her name again. I don't uh, want to. Uh, Lizzie. Lizzie. Jessie and Lizzie. They have started their own uh, business. Your wife has. And so that's spreading throughout your household now. Oh, and Dr. Simmons, let me tell you, at the front door now, Lizzie just put a gumball machine. <laughs> you got to drop a quarter in to get candy out. And, oh, no. and so, <laughs> so right now it's Skittles in there, but I love the entrepreneur uh -huh. yeah, within yeah. her. Uh, like like you said, it's nothing wrong um, going to work for someone else. Nothing wrong with if, you. If you're working for someone else, make sure that you're being faithful to that person because you wouldn't want somebody to, to work on your on your time working on their business. But yes. the way that I always say is if I can go seven and eight hours a day fulfilling someone else's dream, I can at least come home and sit down on. two hours a day on. and work on my own. Yes. Um, so, and, and absolutely. But when you're working on your own as well, now we're talking about entrepreneurship here. Don't forsake your family. And that's one thing that I always uh, share on Just Frugal Me, because I'm like, if I can go again, seven, eight hours a day to look at my supervisor, I need to come home and just want to just look at my wife as well. So just don't lock yourself in the room and say, I'm building my business. Everybody go get on your iPad, TV, and everything else and leave me alone. But it's a family effort. And the thing is, even now, as me working on YouTube, uh, building a business there, have a website, justfrugalme.com, working on blogging and having free resources, uh, information there. And Keisha, uh, she's working as well as a youtuber that's cooking and sharing uh, meal prep tips mm -hmm. my daughters see all of this yeah and they are absorbing everything that they can from this and not only that they are inspired as well and that's where i go back to being inspired so overall when you're talking about being frugal it's just not talking about your money but it's talking about the whole plan that you have for your life uh, it, it, it's Again, just building block by block at a time, just those inheritance and changing that type of stuff. But, you know, I, um, I have watched so many young people who have so many talents mm -hmm. and they do, they get inspired, but then it just drops when they don't have anybody around them to keep them motivated. And so that's the same thing that happens with us sometimes. We need some people around us who are moving in the direction of entrepreneurship, if that's what you choose to do. But certainly those people around us who are being frugal. Yes. <laughs> Look, Joshua, I need you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I really, to be honest with you, I'm in a better place than I was years ago um, with being frugal because uh, I, I watched a video of yours and you were given the five uh, things that we could do and one of those things you said was budget yes. okay so can you talk a little bit about 
budgeting and how do we go about doing that? All right. Um, so, so to break it down, a budget is not telling yourself no. A budget is pretty much giving yourself permission to say yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I always like to break it down if I was going on a trip. If I was going on a trip, I would want to know where I'm going, how long I'm going to be there, how the weather is going to be. I need to know how to dress, how much money I need to take. Am I going to do any excursions, hotels, rental cars, Uber? And you just want to have that plan in place before you get there. Mm -hmm. Because it's the person who will jump in the car and they just start driving off with no direction. That's the person who's going to not know where they're headed. So a budget is pretty much doing the same thing with your money that you want to know how much money is coming in and where your money is going. And from there, if you say, if you're a person that like to go out to eat, mm -hmm. budget for it. Budget it's just for saying, it. you don't want to say, yeah, I'm going out to eat, going out to eat, going out to eat. And you sit down one day and your card is declined. You just want to mm -hmm. know, okay, if I'm going to go out to eat three times out of the week, and my budget is $40 each time, I know not to go over $40. Uh -huh. So, but you can, but and one great thing with a budget too, it's a living document. So if you see that, okay, I went out and it's $50 this time, okay, maybe I need to make it $35 the make, next uh, time uh -huh. just to just to balance it out. But a lot of times too, I feel that people, they're afraid of the word budget. I was going to say the B word. Uh, and that B word is budget because sometimes when people see how much they're really spending or see how much debt they're really in, mm -hmm. uh, then they start, you know, a guard go up. It's like they're afraid to face reality. So sometimes people, they, it's almost like how we have people who's afraid to go to the doctor whenever something's wrong because they're afraid of what the doctor will tell them. All in your mind. Just because they don't go <laughs> to the doctor don't mean that the problem doesn't exist. So a budget is just simply saying it's my roadmap to have that financial freedom that I've been looking for. And before I start budgeting, it was hard. Mm -hmm. I would go out and I bought uh, Keisha a Christmas gift and I had to use three credit cards, some cash and my debit card in order to get this one gift. But at the end of the day, after I start budgeting, it almost like it gave me a raise within myself, um, a raise within itself, because then I start seeing like, whoa, I found like $100 here. Wow, I was like literally throwing away $50 there. And so a budget will help you streamline your finances. So like some of the things that you didn't know you were buying just because it was just out of habit mm -hmm. and start letting all of those things just be there and you will know what you're spending your money on, what the things that you can cut out. Like I was paying for a $50 newspaper subscription. Yeah, and, but I was just so used uh, paying it, but I'm sitting down with my budget. And even now, uh, Keisha and I, we just had a budget meeting the other day where we, after we pay off one or two things and budgeting as well, we're going to uh, pick up, well, not even pick up, like I said, it's giving you a raise within itself, $1,700 that we found in our budget that we didn't know that was originally there by making one little minor change that's not even going to change our lifestyle. So that's why budgeting is so important because people say, I need a part-time job. I need more money. Well, if you start budgeting, you can see where your you money going your money. and say, well, you know what? Maybe I eat Popeye's too much. Maybe I can't <laughs> cut that one day a week or two days a week because like, even when I was back in school, I'm indebted to Popeye's. <laughs> You know, I spent so much money at Popeye's and IHOP, they should have gave me a share in their company. So it's just one of those things that, you know, so that's why budgeting is so important. And, you know, I like, um, I'm the type of person, when I sit down to even um, pay my bills, I have to see it. I have to write it out. And some, some people might think that is just crazy, but I do that. I sit there and write out every little thing so I can see it on the paper. And that the first thing that's on the top of my list, and there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it, is tithing. 
Amen. So that, that comes off the top before mm -hmm. I spend anything else. Um, after I do that, I start go with the priority things of the household. And if there's something left, um, then I know we can, you know, maybe go buy something that we like. So, yeah, it's it's been a, a learning experience. But Joshua, I remember thinking years ago, I did not need credit cards. Mm. I would not get a credit card. For, for I would not do it. I, I would tell people, listen, if I can't pay cash, I don't want it. <laughs> but I realized over the years, that was not a good move. What do you think about that? Um, as it relates to credit cards, um, I'm not a big fan, uh -huh. but I know that everyone's situation is different. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a one size fit all where, but my thing is I do have a credit card that I do spend mm -hmm. regularly, but the cap limit is only $300. Uh huh. See that's so how, the, yeah. Yeah. So like I went out I yesterday and I, uh, spent that, but after everything cleared off, I, I put it literally right back, back on there. Away. And see, that's but, how I deal with it, too. It's, it's a limited. I don't, I don't get much off. And every time I spend, I put it right back on there. And that helps to build credit. Because I've noticed, you know, over a course of time, the credit score is rising. So yeah, credit card. I used to shy away from it. Mm -mm. Yeah, but but don't. Uh, but the the and the other side of me is saying, if you can stay away, of mm -hmm. uh, like how I known people who have twenty, thirty thousand dollars in credit card, and they are pretty much going to work where it's a two family household. Well, two. Um, not two family, but two people are working within the household where one of them actually could stay at home, but if they wasn't shelling out another $2,000 in credit card uh, bills. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say that you are, and the Bible says this as well, that you're a slave to your lender. We are lenders because, and not borrowers. We're supposed to be. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, because the thing is, if you're going to work every day just to pay somebody else off, that, that you're pretty much working for free because you don't get yeah. to hold on to anything. So that's what the other side of me say about credit card is, is it's nice to have, like I have that $300 one mm -hmm. because of some of the protections. Uh, and I know debit card receives the same uh, yeah. protection, but I, but the good thing about a credit card, if you are making a larger purchase and you have the money in the bank just to put it right back on there, because if that company start acting funny with your money, you don't, they're not really playing with your mortgage money at that point or your food money. And if it's a really big issue and you can prove that a company is out there doing you wrong, I had a lot of these type of experiences with companies who would just take your money. Uh -huh. The credit card a company will put that money back in that and money, they have yeah, their own yeah. lawyers and everything else to fight those cases. So in large purchases, I will put it on a credit card, but I'm not putting it on just to pay the minimum payment. I'm putting it right. on there just to drop that money back on there. Yeah. And like you said, I'm the same way. I have that one credit card, <laughs> you know, so um, if audience, if you're listening, don't go out and get a bunch of credit cards and then you know you can't, you know, and you spend it, spend it, spend it, you cannot uh, pay the, the, the balance of the credit card. Now, I noticed the second thing on your list was, this is very important too, emergency fund. A lot of African Americans, people of color, we have an issue with having emergency funds. Something go wrong in the house, and we don't have the money to pay for it or something goes wrong with the car, we don't have an emergency stash. Can you talk a little bit about that? When you have an emergency fund, that's uh, money stashed away in the bank. Uh, I always would say start off about between 500 if you don't make a, as much or a thousand, but you always want to add on to that every single month. Those emergencies, what the things that you thought were emergencies, will become just an inconvenience at that point. Mm -hmm. If you if you have an emergency fund, the tire blow, I'm not freaking out. My whole thing now is, okay, I need to get my car down to the dealership. And Keisha, we might have to have 
one car for about four hours now. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever you have an emergency fund, and it's so sad that if you ride down your street, eight out of those 10 houses that they don't, they don't really have enough of money in their banking accounts that would suffice for a simple emergency. We're, when I say simple emergency, if a radiator go out on the car, if a car needs to be replaced, most of those people that you see, they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck with nothing in the bank, no more than $1,000 in the bank. So it's very important to have that cushion. Now, you're not going to get a lot of interest off of that. You're not going to... But I like to call my emergency fund my assurance fund. If something mm -hmm. happened, I'm assured that that's one less thing I have to worry about. Because if an emergency happened, the last thing that you need to be focusing on is how you're going to get through that emergency. If, uh, God forbid, if someone gets sick in the family, you shouldn't have to be worrying so much about the money. You should have your energy trying to help that person get better and focus on that person. You don't need that extra stress in your life trying to nag at you whenever you can just put $50 a month, $75 yeah. a month, and let that build up. So your emergency fund is not whenever the pizza guy come and you need to leave a tip or, oh, I have extra money, let's try to go do a project in the house. Just let that money sit there. And like I said, it's not going to get a lot of interest. And I know that some people may say, well, inflation go up. And, and your emergency fund is not your credit card. I know some <laughs> people will say, well, I have $10,000 credit card. But the thing is, you, you charge that. Now you're going to have to worry about how you're going to make those $250 minimum payments every single month because you thought that was your emergency fund. So that's very important. And it's, it's wise to, I, a lot of times people say three to six months. Mm -hmm. I normally say six months to a year because look what we just went through with the pandemic and yeah. people are still out of work. And so you want to have your living expenses at least up to six months. However, if you can only cover the first thousand, that's better than nothing. Right. So uh, like, I know it's not one size fit all. So it's like, if you have a lot of, bills out there. That's one thing. I'm not sure if we covered that topic is that's why it's so important to the start paying off your debt. Yeah. Uh, if you are in debt, because again, you don't want to be in debt and something happen and that money come in. And now all of your money is going out during an emergency. You lose your job. Guess what? The credit card companies and all of these people you owe, they don't care if you lost they your job. They don't want their money. They, they want their money. And yeah, you might stop paying them, but they're going to get their money sooner or later. They're going to start garnishing wages and everything else. They're going to get their money one way or the other. Uh, so, and it's real good just to get out of that debt and build that emergency fund. So you have that cushion there. You don't have all of this, these bills going out. Like I shared earlier that Keisha and I, after we pay off these two things, by itself, we're talking about $1,700. Mm -hmm. It's like, what can you do with an extra $1,700 uh, okay. on top of the extra money that you're already spending? So it's just one of those things. It's not so much of, I need another job, but let's clean house first, first. before going there. Now, it's okay to go get another job to start chipping away at that debt. But, um, and I'm not knocking anything because I do Uber I do Uber during the winter as well, but my daughter uh, was saying, Lizzie was saying like, oh, Uber driver, this is great. I was like, that's great, but that's not something that you want to do for the rest of your life. I'm not saying anything wrong with it, but you want to get yourself in a position that you don't have to worry about your money right. or when something happens. So that's why emergency fund is so important. You see, I'm going down your list. The next thing on your list is investing. What are some smart places? Where are some smart places to invest? Okay, well, let me first start off by saying I'm not a financial advisor. Right, right. Uh, however, um, investing your money, uh, the, the, stock, the stock market over the history, the S&P 500, and that's pretty much keeping in line with, it, it pretty much mirrors what the stock market is doing. It normally has an increase of about 8 to 12% over its lifetime. Now, some people say, well, I don't want to invest my money. That's risky. But what are you doing with your money? 
Because if you don't have an emergency fund, if you don't have all of these other things and you're digging yourself in debt, to me, it's that I was going to throw it away anyway. So I uh, use an uh, app. Well, I, first, I do have a long-term investment a plan with a financial advisor. And that uh, fund is doing very well. We just had our annual meeting. Over the last year, that fund is up 31%. Mm. 31% of what I put inside of there. But I also have what I call my play money. I take it in and out um, as a, like saving for stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's through Robinhood. And Robinhood, mm -hmm. you can buy fractional shares. And the good thing with fractional shares is you don't have to have a lot of money. You can drop a dollar on uh -huh. the company and watch that dollar grow. You can have two, three dollars. Um, so even with Robinhood, I mean, up this year, I think uh, I don't check it often because investing is a roller coaster. It goes up, up and, and down, down, up yeah, and down. So yeah. yeah, so I don't really look at it. But I think the last time in the last year on Robinhood, I had an increase of about nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, on top of what I put in, and I didn't really put in much. Uh, so investing is if you want investing is pretty much whenever you want your money to work for you the purpose of every dollar should be to go out there and make you another dollar and, right. that, and that dollar will make you another dollar because whenever you get older you want to retire comfortably you don't right. want to be 80 years old still green yeah, people, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm not saying anything wrong with that <laughs> But I'm not disrespecting rather... anybody, grandma. But <laughs> eighty years old, uh, on your when Dr. Simmons, I have this uh, plan. Is that I don't believe that God created us to just work for other people. I don't even. He, I mean, that's a part. I mean, if if like I said, it's nothing wrong. I never bash anyone for what they do. But I really feel, believe that you should enjoy your life. And whenever you start putting money away in investing and just don't invest blindly, read, knowledge is power, but and believe in what you're investing in. I invest in clean energy, Tesla, Google, yep, yep. and all of those uh -huh. things because that's something I believe in. Uh -huh. uh, and I just don't feel that God places on this earth to serve someone else, to work for other people and forsaking our own dreams and not living our life for Well, the original plan, dreams. Joshua, the yes. original plan of Adam and Eve were to live in paradise, right? Yes. Okay. So that included not having to do those things. It was only when sin came in that now we got to tour the land. Yes. But, you know, something my my um, daughter said to me yesterday, she said, Mama, we should invest in things that are going to gen generate more funds. And that can also include, okay, I have a artist in my house, two artists, a musical artist and a visual artist. So if I go buy materials for my daughter to start her art business, I'm investing because yes. that's going to generate more funds. So there are many ways, you, quick ways you can invest rather than just, you know, being, you know, unfrugal with your money. But um, investing in those things that, like Joshua said, that are important to you. Yes, absolutely. Now we you have, have to believe, you have to believe in mm -hmm. what you put your money in. Right. Now, uh, we touched a little bit on debt, so we'll go past that, but I see something interesting on your list. It's okay to say no. <laughs> you said, say no and mean it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> say no. Because especially when it's with your money, mm -hmm. if, if you, if somebody say something and you say no, and they have a problem with it, that's saying what type of friend you really have. Because people, if, you're if you tell someone no and they respect that, that means they respect who you are. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Whenever you say no, that's pretty much saying that I'm not quite comfortable with something that's going on or something that you said or something that you're asking me to do. So if, if just say, uh, for instance, if a friend want me to go out and do something illegal and I say no, and they say, well, come on, Joshua, you really got to do this. That's already, you already don't respect me right there because right, right. you do not honor my wish. It's like, yeah, so tell people no and mean it. That that's I mean that's enough in itself, you know. Like I always was raised that you're nobody's doormat. Woo. So it's one of those things. If someone is going to devalue you or want you to pitch out something, and if it's affecting your lifestyle, even if it's something as small as going out to eat, oh Josh, come on over to the state place. Oh no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh come on, not unless they say they're going to pay. But if you want me to come out of pocket and I don't want to do it, I mean, I will say no. It's okay to say no. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that people would come up to you on the streets and say, like, I want to sell this CD. You remember when people come up, I, I want you to buy this CD. I got caught a lot of times. Do I remember? Done. I had a guy that did that the <laughs> other day to me. <laughs> and the reason I got caught, because I, I so much want to encourage creators. And so when they would approach me, a new artist trying to make it, I just, my heart was just like, okay. I, but I have so many CDs stacked up that I don't even listen to. And I said, no, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, one, one thing I used to do, especially with the Christian artists uh, one, uh, playing at the church as the director of music, uh, people would come up to me and they were like, oh, well, it's Christian. And I'm like, oh, great. So I would write down the address of the church. Um, and well, I would want them to come worship with us. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, like, and after church, I was like, then I will listen to it after the service. Mm -hmm. And that way you can see where the heart is. Right. One, but two, if it was really good stuff, I would put them, I would schedule a time where they would come back. Mm -hmm. Then we, I would say, okay, now come back and from there, it will create a worship experience with it. Mm -hmm. And we used to do Saturday Night Lives where different artists would come in and it was okay to promote their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, I'm not going to buy it. I mean, I do believe in supporting, but this was yeah. my way to support uh, was to say every, every, every fourth Saturday, we have a Saturday Night Live. I would love for you to come in. Then you can promote your stuff there. So the thing is that first gave exposure, I gave support. It's not that I was just turning, but I gave them a better opportunity than just approaching me at the gas station or at the gas pump. Right, right. Uh, but, and some of those people actually would start becoming active within the church and that would actually build the community even, it would just build that sense of community that they would get there, become active, join the choir and, uh, I mean, and it was just a win-win for everyone. Yeah, so audience, you hear that? I'm going to run over these five steps again. And and you can go to Joshua's channel. He'll give you that information oh. in a moment. But number <laughs> one, manage a budget. Have a budget. Okay? And, and that's really the starting point, right, Joshua? Absolutely. Is that the starting point from the list? Yes. Just to have a budget. Sit down and look at what you're bringing in and what's going out. If you and, and like Joshua said, you don't have to deny yourself life. <laughs> you know, you still can enjoy life, but just be frugal. Okay. The next one was emergency fund. Work towards having emergency fund. That might not come so um, quickly, but Joshua, it's okay to put like five dollars in a jar uh, right yeah uh -huh. something that's better than nothing yeah so yeah just put some money to the side so you can have something um put away in case that tire goes out and you need to get a plug you might not be able to get a new tire but you need that's a plug to go in the tire okay Absolutely. so um emergency fund work on that teach your children to do it um mm -hmm. investing in whatever area you want to invest in as long as you're passionate about it and you will see growth. Invest in something. Stay away from debt. That's another one. Um, you know, I, I hear people say all the time, and I'm going to pay this house. I'm going to pay this off. I'm pay well, 
read, do your research on what things you need to pay off and what things, because uh, Joshua, have you uh, heard anything about it's not so good to particularly pay off a house, a mortgage? Have you heard that? Uh, yeah, I heard that, but that's not my philosophy. It's not yours? Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear a lot of financial advisors say that's not smart, but I don't know. That's why I'm yeah, asking. Some, yeah, some people say, yeah, you want to get the tax credits, but look what you're paying in interest. Mm -hmm. It's more than what you're going to get as the tax credit of what you put on your house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I know, well, I'm just going to leave it as that. So, What about cars? Is it wise? Do you think, what's your opinion on paying off a car? Oh, cars are horrible. I mean, you lose, <laughs> you lose a what? Uh, but you drive I, off I'm the going lot. Off the top of my, uh, I'm going off the top of my head, but right off the lot, it's at least 20 yeah. to 30% just driving it right off. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a car loan, I mean, that's horrible uh, because at least with a house, uh, that a house is considered more of an investment. It goes up, it goes down. I mean, even with this house, I'm up probably about 60% from when I first moved into this house. And the equity is like crazy. Mm -hmm. So it goes up, but not many cars will just like spike up in value time you drive mm -hmm. it off. There's none that right. I can really think of. So yeah, once you pay it off, don't run off and, and, and like, uh, and I don't want to get long winded here, but like you said that some people say that I can't wait to pay off this. I can't wait to pay off that. What's the use of paying off something if you're going to jump right back into that into debt? Into it, right, yeah, right. So try to devise a plan to let that be your last resort. Yeah, I, that's very good that you said that. Why would you go get more? I've told people uh, <laughs> that as well. Why are you going to go get another? Drive that car then if you paid it off. Drive right. that one car till you can't drive it no more. Don't go get another car just because you're trying to look important. But that's just my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a disclaimer. Y'all can look at it. There's a disclaimer on here. These are the uh, views and opinions of the people who are on the platform here. But my opinion is, why would you go do that just to look important? Okay. Yep. Um, also, the saying no, that was the last one. It's okay to say no um, to purchases. Did I cover it all, Joshua? You covered it all. <laughs> Is but there there's, there's always more uh, on the on the channel mm -hmm. uh, where it's everything from saving money, investing money, side hustles. I have some just me turning on the camera, talking just out anything, mm -hmm. uh, current events, what's going on with your finances, with stimulus and uh, reoccurring payments that's coming in for the child tax care credit. There's so much stuff out mm -hmm. there that you don't want to miss out on because a lot of times people they will perish because there is a lack of knowledge mm. so yeah well joshua can you tell the audience how they can tune in to your your platforms that you have and i don't know do you do um advising on the side away from the show uh, platform oh uh, uh, I don't. I don't uh, do advising because I'm not a financial, financial advisor. advisor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you go onto the channel, I do uh, talk to people uh, on the Frugal Me Live, where there are financial advisors that come through, realtors. Uh, so, because I believe in speaking on the things that I am pretty much that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's one of those things too. If it's a uh, if there's a subject, I know I was talking to Julie. She's from Invest in Latina mm -hmm. um, about investing, and so I really believe that you're not on the island by yourself. But it takes a community to really bring forth change. So if you go on to the channel, just frugal me uh, on YouTube. Uh, there's uh, different people that's coming in and we're breaking it down from life insurance. And that's another bit one oh, yeah. uh, that, uh, uh, that I feel that the black and brown community, that's one thing that we are not really taking advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, that you have different type of life insurance uh, policies out there too. I know nobody really want to hear this, but we're not getting out of this alive. And one of the best ways to tell your family that you love them is to devise a plan for what happens. That's right. Uh, so uh, people are on there talking about uh, wills, living wills, and 
other uh, type of wills as well that you want to have in place so you don't have those families that get together and they just fight and bicker and then you have people not talking to each other. Uh, so you always want to make sure you have a plan. You want to plan out everything. It's okay to be spontaneous, but at the same time, you always want to have a plan when it's coming to your livelihood and your finances. You don't want to be spontaneous about what's going to happen with your kids if something happened to you. That's mm -hmm. not something that a spontaneous decision. Right, right. So they can say, say again how they can... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Okay, just frugal me dot no, just frugal me on YouTube, and I also have a blog there, just frugal me dot com. Okay, y'all heard that? Go look. There's some valuable information there, and subscribe to the channel. And so we can all be better at being frugal with our finances. It is a process. I'm better now than I was two years ago, one year ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting better as I move along. So it's a process. Don't be patient with yourself. Um, but this is something that we all need so that we can grow financially. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for oh, thank you so much for having me. Information. And like I say every week, if you would like to be a part of this platform, please reach out to me at integrativeartscreations.com. Uh, or you may email me at integrativearts at att.net. Uh, we are on Twitter, Arts Integrate, Instagram, Integrative Arts, Facebook, Integrative Arts Creations. There's a way to get in contact um, with, with me. And also, uh, we have a community there, a private community, the Connecting Point for Creators Group. I say this every week. Joshua is a part of it as well. It's just a, it's just a um, private group where we um, celebrate each other and, and what we're doing. We inform people of what each other's doing because, you know, iron sharpens iron and collaboration works. He just said community. We, it takes a community. And so we're just trying to build a community of creators um, to help us all get better. And everyone is a creator. Everyone. You, there's something that you create. So we would love to have you look it up. Facebook, the Connecting Point for Creators group. Thanks again, Joshua. Oh, thank you so much. And, and you have a great one. Until we meet again here on this platform. Peace and blessings, everyone. Bye-bye.